Good morning, and welcome to this week's episode of the Sports Curious Podcast, where we are talking this week about the Kentucky Derby. It is everyone's favorite event because it is the shortest sporting event that I can think of, and it involves food and fashion. So what else could we ask for? Of course, today, if you have not joined us for Sports Curious Podcast before, we'd like to welcome you and also tell you a little bit about who we are. We love to talk about sports so it can create a conversation. Sports is a fantastic conversation starter. It's a safe conversation starter, especially in these day and ages. And so what we love to do is give you an opportunity to talk about something happening in the world of sports, but then give you an avenue to talk about something else you might want to talk about more than sports. Let's say Kentucky Derby, right? We can talk about horses, but you could also talk about food, fashion, Louisville, whatever you want to talk about. It all fits in there together. And so bringing it all together with a nice little bow is the guy who loves to do epic shit. Our, my co-host, my co-founder, Scott, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here once again. And we're talking about the fastest two minutes in sports. It's the perfect race for today's generation's attention span. Mm -hmm. It's the Twitter, and the X, if you will, of sports. Twitter, X, TikTok, Instagram Reels, all the above. And we're here to give you the information to talk about the race, join conversations, and sound knowledgeable. That's it. And everyone loves this event because to me, it's kind of like the Super Bowl, right? There is the sport happening right? But people are really here for the commercials and the food when it comes to Super Bowl, where this one, people are here for the drinks, the food, the celebrities, and the, the betting. Probably the betting is a big thing, right? I mean, if you want to participate or you've probably entered some sort of pool, something around the Kentucky Derby. And so we're going to talk through that toward the end on how to bet on the ponies. But first, start us off. This is the 150th running of the Kentucky Derby at Churchill Downs. So talk to me a little bit about what we can expect. Just general overview of the Kentucky Derby. It's the monumental 150th running of the Kentucky Derby. This is the preeminent race for horse racing. It's at the forefront of sports for, you know, one day. And I think probably the most important thing is that in this race, this is three-year-old males only. So this is their only opportunity in their entire lives to ever get to run this race, which puts a lot of pressure on them. And it's really kind of mind-blowing that they only get one shot at this. I'm glad I'm not I'm not basing my, my future earnings off of my three-year-old because that would mean I would have no money. Two minutes of your three-year-old's life. And not <laughs> they it. better be the good ones. I better be the good two minutes. Which could happen, but it could also go downhill quickly. So that's I think that's pretty much that's a pretty incredible feat that these three year olds get one shot. It is. It's pretty incredible, and we have so much to talk about. But the first thing I want to talk about, and I may even screw this up, but we as Nevadans, it's very, we're very passionate about teaching everyone that if you want to. To, to sound like a Nevada and you say Nevada, it's not Nevada, just so you know. That's like our, our soapbox that we get on. And so I have heard a lot of people do not know how to say Louisville. And I've been told that you say it like you have a bunch of marbles in your mouth. Louisville. So can, can you say it for us? I think that's how you say it. If you're, if you're from Louisville, correct me. But um, it's, well, a lot of people like Louisville, like people, I'm just trying to, you know, give, tell people that, it's a little, you want, you want to kind of marble it all together. So Louisville. That's good. Good to notice. I'm like an insider now. Well, you know, it's just, you know, I know people who have tried to do business in Nevada and they pronounce it wrong. I'm like, buddy, you got to start somewhere else first. Yeah. You lose all credibility when you say Nevada. There you go. So you just, just looking out for all of you. There's your other food, right? The fashion is huge when it comes to the Kentucky Derby. We obviously know about the hats, which started around the 1960s when fashion norms sort of loosened up and bright and festive was socially acceptable. I have been to the Derby. The fashion is over the top. There's a lot of pressure to show up and look great. And so what would you wear if you went to the Derby? I think I would wear a fun top hat, maybe mm. a multicolored top hat. Maybe uh, well, I was thinking more like a, a fancy Abraham Lincoln hat. Maybe <laughs> plain, 
maybe Cam Newton, if you've seen his wonderful hat collection, maybe get something out of his Ooh, closet. I like that. I like that. Yeah, he's got or the collection, maybe a floral pattern suit. I think that would be perfect. Yeah, when we went, I couldn't find anything. And the, the, the pointers that they give you is to find your outfit first and then figure out your hat because hats are much easier mm-hmm. to work around. But uh, we went for the Kentucky Oaks, which is the females, the girl, the female horses race on Friday. Everyone wears pink. And so we did that one and I got a pink hat. I did my backwards. I got my hat first, by the way. Um, and then the actual derby day, I got this kind of green color dress and this massive, you've seen it, it's massive. And it's like a mm-hmm. sauce, saucer uh, hat and things I will learn and I'll pass on my pointers for you. Once of all, first check the weather. Because it snowed for the oak, oh, nearly snowed for the oaks, and was raining cold. It was very cold for the derby, uh, so that was that wasn't. And of course, I didn't bring a coat, so I looked ridiculous in some sort of like rain slicker. But my mm-hmm. hat, because I'm not very tall, Churchill Downs is so crowded. I don't think people realize it's really a lot of drunk people wandering around. It's really what it is because there's a good forty five minutes to an hour between each race, and I believe. The Derby, don't quote me, is somewhere in the teens. So it's probably the 15th race-ish or so of the day. So they start at early morning with races, and then you wait an hour, run a race, wait an hour, run a race. And so what do you do in between? You eat and drink So and bet on ponies. And so everyone's just really intoxicated. Um, but you're smashing into people. So with this giant hat, I couldn't fit through the crowds. Um, it would probably be great if I was, you know, Asia Wilson and I was super tall, but I'm not. So that's my word of advice if you're going to the Derby. Probably a little late if you're going this year. But uh, for ne- future reference, a nice fascinator or something that goes up is probably a lot more helpful if you're not very tall. So just my pointers and obviously sensible shoes. And these are these are great tips for people who have never been or who are watching on TV. I don't, yeah, I don't think I understand the hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people there. Hat space gets to be a bit tricky. And the traffic on the way out with 150,000 people. I don't know if I've ever told you this story, but we had a bus. We got tickets with some friends, and we had a bus that took us out along with everybody else and their mother. And so Churchill Downs is in a neighborhood, and you're just sitting in traffic. And the people in the neighborhood use this as an opportunity to sell water and sodas, beer, whatever, out of their front yard. We drive by, we're sitting in traffic in front of a house that has jello shots. So my husband, Reagan, grabs his wallet, tells the bus driver, I'll be right back. We weren't moving anywhere. Um, he runs out, he buys as many jello shots as he can fit in like his shirt that he like made a, a bag out of and brings back jello shots on the bus for like 40 people on the bus. None of us died. So there was that. That was good. They were safe jello shots. but. Things you things you didn't know about the Derby. I didn't realize the entrepreneurship of the people living around there. It's brilliant. I'm sure I mean, just like USC football so, games, people are letting you park in their, their front yard and all the other things too. Yeah, and a nice jello shot as a nightcap of the Kentucky Derby sounds lovely. Well, it, I don't even think it was a nightcap because I think the sun was still out. We went to dinner after we got back to our hotel because it wasn't that late. So jello shots at five o'clock in the afternoon, anyone? Why not? Sounds like college. It does sound like college. It tasted like college too. It's not great. So, so anyways, we'll move on from what to wear. That's my pointer. But the food. Obviously, southern food is a huge, huge piece of this. And then the mint julep. And the mint julep is the official drink of the Kentucky Derby. I think, I don't know the exact stats, over 100,000 mint juleps served throughout the uh, the event. And like you said, there's tons of day drinking going on. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of mint juleps flowing throughout the day. Mm-hmm. And if you want to get fancy, they, they even have the, 100, the 1K mint julep, which is the fancy mint julep for $1,000. And does it come with, um, I don't know, something besides, is it a gold cup, probably? Something like that, I'm imagining. It comes with the experience to tell you people that you bought a $1,000 Mitchell. <laughs> but they've never bought $40 in Jello shots, so there you go. 
True. I don't think there's a 1K Jello shot out there anywhere. Hey, if you're listening and you live in the neighborhood, here's your opportunity. DM us. We'll, we'll buy some from you. There you go. A little gold schlager, a little flakes of gold. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Now, what did I read about Churchill Downs? Now, the Masters has done this with sort of a Masters at home, pimento cheese, that kind of stuff. The Churchill Downs is doing something similar. They partnered with Martha Stewart to make a derby at home kit. They have partnered with Martha Stewart, everyone's favorite entertainer, um, entertainer cook, everything. Instagram so she's model. All Instagram model, convict, all, all kinds of all things. All the things. She wears all the hats. So mm -hmm. they partnered with her this year. Who She's also going to be the celebrity to say riders up for oh, the horses. Cool. So in addition to partnering with food, she's going to give the riders up command. That is always very important to the race. And before that, she has created the Kentucky Derby at home experience ahead of the race. So everyone can enjoy Martha Stewart's beautiful recipes. And it looks like that includes Benedictine dip, deviled eggs, hot crab dip, pimento cheese, big batch lemon mint juleps. What else could one want? And I'm sure it's, I, I should probably click on this button and see how much it is, but it's probably not cheap, I'm assuming. No, I mean, it's a lovely array of different items for everyone's dietary needs. <laughs> Unless you're not into cheese or uh, eggs. eggs or dairy. It's fine. It's all fine. So no, who else? Know, so we have the uh, pimento cheese just like the Masters, so they're taking a little bit of a uh, cue from them. It's, a, it's, a, it's very Southern. Mm -hmm. So. Talk to me about, I mean, the Derby is a place where you see so many celebrities. Um, I know we have, uh, I believe Winona Judd is going to be there singing the national anthem. I know you always see all kinds of athletes. What do you think the draw is? Like, why, why, are, we going, why are we going to the Derby? What's exciting about it? What are, what's going on? I think it's just the epitome of social media society these days, right? You get That's dressed right. up. You, you put on your fancy hats. You may not know anything about horses or betting on the horses or anything like that, but you have a fancy outfit on and you want to be seen. Yeah, be seen up in the suites, which are up there on the yes. top. I, um, I do want to backtrack a tiny bit on the at-home thing from the Derby. It's a menu. So if you go to the Kentucky Derby's website, it's not a kit where you would order it, where it shows up like the Masters. They're, they're giving you everything for free. They're giving you all their recipes. That they, that they came up with. So it's a little different, not quite a kit, but it's cheaper than a kit because you get the recipes yourself. Perfect. So I can make the hot crab dip on my own? You sure can. All right. Now you can whip up some pimento cheese. Let's keep the recipes different than the recipe for the masters. That's Martha's favorite fancy recipe, so I assume it's different. I assume it would, of course it would be. Now, we've got celebrities, obviously. Why, and Nona Judd, we said, was performing the national anthem. We'll have, obviously, Martha Stewart will be there. You know, Jack Carlo was very present last year because he's a, he's a Kentucky guy. Hopefully, we'll see him this year. I'm sure he'll be there. I'm sure he'll be there. And I don't know if you recall that he had somebody carry him over the track because it was muddy and raining. He didn't want to get his white suit messed up. I did not hear that. It's one of the funnier clips on the internet if you have a chance to look it up. Is it like piggyback style or like uh, no, crossing like the threshold? Multiple men picked him up, kind of like a child. <laughs> I can't wait to see this. Uh, we'll we'll share that in our. Uh, we have to share that on our on our social media because that's great. Now, yes. Well, they you don't have to worry about rain this year because as of today, the Derby is forecasted to be sunny and a high of seventy one. So that sounds absolutely perfect. But did you know? 48% of the derbies have experienced rain at some point during the day. That sounds like 48% of an awful time. Yeah. Nothing like running in the mud, right? Because the jockeys, if I remember correctly, wear, they used to wear lots of goggles and they would throw the goggles off because they would get muddy. Obviously, if you're not the lead horse. But don't they just have little, little like clear goggle covers, for lack of a better word, that just peel off? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so they have different different layer 
like goggle covers, so you'll, they'll just peel off a layer and there's more layers underneath. So as soon as they get, you know, mud kicked in their face from horses in front of them, they just peel off the that layer. Interesting. I'm just thinking about all the things you have to be aware of while you're a jockey. Like, don't fall off. Make sure your horse is running. See what the person next to you is doing. Rip off pieces of goggle tape. You know, it's really interesting. Now, what I didn't know, and that jockeys aren't necessarily always with the same horse. I always kind of figured they were, they were kind of like with a house of some sort or whatever. But they they do rotate. There's they're contractors. Yeah, and for I mean some for this level of horse racing, I, I assume that most of them stick with the horse throughout the you know, Kentucky Derby and the Triple Crown. But other than that, I think they kind of bounce around depending on who's well, paying more. Too. Right, I was imagine too. At some point, it may not be worth their time to do some of the lower races. Exactly, and like we said, you only race once in these Triple Crown races, so it's, they really have nothing to do with the horse after. You know, after they're done being three. Now, one thing I really want to talk about, we're talking about horses. And horse names are really interesting, right? It's one of those, there's a whole bunch of rules set forth by the jockey club on how you name a horse. It can't, it has to be over a certain number of letters, but not too many. I believe it can't include any numbers. It can have never been used before. So you're coming up with now 150 years later, you know, the first person to run could call their horse Bob, but that's not happening anymore. So you're coming up with unique names, all these things. And there are some really hilarious names out there that I've run previously. Um, I know we've highlighted these before, but they're just so freaking funny. Um, like Hoochie Coochie Mama, Bodacious Tatas. I mean, the names that people get away with, it's like a license plate, right? Like you're like, how did that get past the DMV? <laughs> I don't think, but yeah. I don't think we have anything too crazy in this year's. It looks to be pretty normal, as opposed to a few that you mentioned. At a certain point, you can only there's only so many names to go around. I guess that's true. I mean, I do see Encino, so that could be named after Encino, California, or possibly they're just a big Polly Shore fan, and they like Encino I Man. Assume, I assume it's Polly Shore fan. That would be and my assumption. Yes. I mean, if we're, if we're calling it like it is. We've got it. At this moment, we've got an epic ride in the field, which I know. It's going to go with your shirt. Could there go with go. the shirt. Not very favored to win, but that's always an option. Who do, we, who do we have as a favorite? At this current moment, as we know, things can change drastically. A drop of a hat with horses. Fierceness, which, I mean, that sounds like a great name for Derby winner is currently favored. And then we have Sierra Leone and then Catching Freedom is at third at this moment. Now, you you mentioned that, you know, things change very rapidly in horse racing. Wasn't it the favorite last year that was scratched, like right at the last minute? Yes, Forte was the favorite all week heading up into the Kentucky Derby. And then day of the race, they scratched him due to health concerns. So... That's why we kind of said at this moment, because things can change. So at the drop of a hat with horses, because they take extreme precautions with these um, animals to make sure that they're in the best of health. Now, I don't know how to nicely transition this, but speaking of maybe someone who didn't take the health of his horses in such consideration, Bob Baffert, who was a longtime trainer in horse racing. We all know him as the trainer with the, the blue tinted glasses it, he's is he still he, he his horse, horses have previously tested positive for banned substances and it's happened multiple times yeah uh, he was banned last i looked is that still the case yes the man with the uh, beautiful blue tinted glasses and tremendous hair is still banned he's been banned since one of his horses uh tested positive in 2021 so he has not been a part of the Kentucky Derby since then. And a judge uh, denied a request to have his horse, horse moose race this year. So can he still, and maybe you don't know all the technicalities of it, but can he still train them and then someone else takes them? Like, is the representative, no. like if they train in his no. farm, he can't do anything like that. 
Well, yeah, that's why it's, mm-hmm. it's horse, horse Muth was denied. Interesting. So that's what, three years without one of the top trainers? Yeah, well, if I remember correctly, he's had a couple of horses that have died, and it's not been real pretty. Yes, and I don't recall which year it was, but I think he had a horse that passed away and then had a horse win the race. So, it was, mm-hmm. so that's not the best situation. So I think that probably factors into his ban. Of course. Well, you gotta, you gotta treat him with kindness. Now, mm-hmm. we've had a triple crown winner. So a triple crown winner is a horse that wins the Derby. Then the Preakness and then the Belmont Stakes. So it's the three consecutive races that make up the triple crown. Which may and, be the most challenging speed in sports. We've only had 13 horses actually complete the triple crown. Wow. And when you consider this has been going on for, I don't know how long the other two races, but it, essentially we'll call it 150 years. Yes. It's pretty incredible. And, and, yeah, and the reason it's so challenging, it's a shorter span to recover for these horses as opposed to what they normally do. So there's about roughly two to three weeks in between races, which is a pretty short time. Um, each each race is a different length. So, I mean, some horses specialize in different lengths, so that's tough. And they can get fresh horses every race. So it's not every horse that races in the Kentucky Derby doesn't necessarily race in the other races. So they can that get the horse, the horse is completely fresh at Preakness Stakes, ready to roll, and the Kentucky Derby winner just ran. You know this intense race a few weeks before. Sure, that makes that makes a lot of sense. The last Triple Crown winner we had was in 2018, which was not that long ago. Now justified 2018. Yeah. Now let's wrap it up on a couple of things. Obviously, the race itself is May Saturday, May 4th. Coverage starts yes. at 2:30 p.m. Eastern time. It's a long program. The last very very small bit of that uh, five hour coverage is actually the Derby. As we know, it's the fastest uh, mm-hmm. two and a half minutes in sports. Or two minutes in sports, excuse me. And then it's a mile and a quarter track. And the winner runs for, they call it Run for the Roses. Why do they call it Run for the Roses? My guess is, I know they put like a horse, or not a horse, a uh, rose reef, reef on the horse at the end who wins. I don't really know the exact answer here. That is, that, that's a, that is a good, the truth. They put a, a garland. I saw made of 400 roses over okay. the horse when they win. So probably makes the jockey also smell better. Everyone smells better when they were covered mm-hmm. in 400 roses. So that probably helps too. Well, there you go. There's, there's some trivia for you. <laughs> 400 roses. Before we wrap up. There you go. Before we wrap up, is there anything you want to share with us that we, that you and I missed? Uh, I know we spoke about betting earlier. Betting on horses oh, yes. is a huge, a huge uh, aspect of this. And typically no one knows what they're doing. People are picking horses by name, color, jockey, number, anything they can justify themselves picking a winner. So I guess we can Me in the white aisle. Yeah, yes. exactly. Okay, tell, talk to us about betting. We know it's obviously win, place, show, or the, the three words you need to know when it comes to betting, betting for horses. So talk to me a little bit about what those three mean. Absolutely. And quick fact, last year, over $288 million was bet on these, on this, uh, the Kentucky Derby. So wow. the numbers are massive. So if you're part of that $288 million this year, what you need to know, if there's different terminology as opposed to other sports. You're not betting money line or spread. Um, if you want to pick the winner straight up, in horse racing, you would say to just to win, which means the horse is to win outright. If you want to place, it's called a place bet, which is the horse will finish in the top two positions. And then if you bet a show bet, that means the horse has to finish in the top three positions. And obviously the payout will be different if from a win, place, and show. Right, the more risky the bet, the higher the payout. Yes, and then... And in other sports where you have a par, which, which would be multiple selections in a bet, we have an exacta, which is picking the first and second place correctly. 
and then a trifecta would be the first, second, and third place exactly. And obviously, your odds to win it. on a trifecta are much higher than just placing, you know, like a, a win bet. Yeah, but you have to pick an individual horse to finish in each of those three spots. Yes, correctly. So it's almost, it's very hard to do. And that's why the payouts are huge and no one usually wins. That makes sense. The one I really like to do, because it's hard, right? If someone knows horse racing, they understand the odds, then it's it's sort of unfair to do betting mm -hmm. if you're at a party or something. So the one I really like to do is just throw all the horses' names in a hat and let people draw, and that's the horse they get. So that way you really are, it's the luck of the draw. Yours may be scratched right before the mm -hmm. race even starts, or you may win even with an odd, you know, the, the, the horse that's not expected to win. So it's kind of a fun way to do that. That makes it a little more, there's no, there's no set skill involved. Obviously all you have to do is watch the race and cheer for two minutes. Yes. I mean, picking out of a hat might be the best sporting sports betting advice I've ever heard. It's, it's kind of the same, right? Like yeah. ding, pick that one. Well, thanks for sharing your, your betting wisdom and your pony wisdom, all of those things. And, um, you need to share with us the video of Jack Harlow being carried across the mud last year. We will see, we will post, we will post that on our social. And if yes. you want more on horse betting, any of those things, we'll throw that all up at lastnightsgame.com so you can have that. And then of course, follow us on our social for updates as we cruise through the rest of the Derby week. Thanks for coming, Scott. Enjoy the fastest two minutes in sports. Amen.